How do you train and distribute an RVC model using your local GPU? You're gonna need a GPU. I think this might work with Intel integrated GPUs. I'm not entirely sure. You're gonna need around 12 gigabytes of disk space. That includes the space of the installation as well as the space taken up by the average training run, plus whatever space you need to store your data set. Go to the RVC GitHub page and navigate to the latest release. You want to select the appropriate 7-zip package depending on what GPU you have. So if you have the NVIDIA one, click on the top one. If you have AMD or Intel, click the bottom. Wait for that to download, then extract it. Once it has extracted, you can go to the extracted folder and click on go-web.bat. And you should see your default web browser pop up with the RVC web UI. If it doesn't happen to pop up, you can manually navigate to the URL for the web UI, which should be localhost colon 7897. Now in the web UI, we want to go to the train tab. This is where we can configure all of the parameters for training. At this point, it is appropriate to briefly talk about the dataset. Your dataset will consist of a single folder containing any audio files that you wish to train an RVC model on. Ideally, to get a workable voice, we want at least two minutes of data. The more data, the better. And the higher quality the data, or the less noise in it, the better. Unlike other systems, RVC will accept any common audio format in the training stage. So if you have waves, MP3s, FLAX, AUGs, those should all be accepted, which means that you don't have to worry about transcoding anything. Also with RVC, you do not need to slice the audio yourself. The pre-processing stage actually automatically does that. With all that out of the way, let's go back to the web UI and let's talk about the parameters. Firstly, on the top left here, we have the experiment name. This is just for labeling purposes. You can call this whatever you want. I just use the name of the character that I'm training. To the right of that, we have the sample rate. Most models are 48K, so I select 48K. The pitch guidance and the version parameters are both fine as they are. Under step 2A, you want to enter in the path of the folder containing your training audio files. Under step 2B, I generally don't touch anything because RMVPE is the highest quality pitch extraction model. Then at the bottom, we have the step 3 parameters. The save frequency determines how often the training saves checkpoints. It's kind of up to preference. Generally, I crank it up to 50 because I don't think there's that much value in saving any more frequently than that. For me, 50 epics goes by fast enough that I'm not really worried about losing a significant amount of work if my computer somehow dies in the middle of training. Total training epics determines the maximum number of times that the training process will iterate through the dataset. I usually go with just 250 or 300 for this value. I find that that's a pretty safe choice to get workable results. If you're a little bit more sophisticated, you could use TensorBoard to monitor the loss values for the training and then decide where to stop the training based on the loss, but that adds a tiny bit more complexity. And also, loss values are not necessarily directly correlated with perceived audio quality. So I'll consider it out of scope here. After that, we have the batch size. A higher batch size will increase training speed at the cost of using more memory. So generally you want to increase this as high as possible before you run out of memory. Eight is a pretty conservative choice. It should work for pretty much any GPU that's capable of running training in the first place. I have a 16 gigabyte GPU, so I'm able to crank batch size up to 24, but your mileage may vary depending on your GPU. Next, we have save only the latest checkpoint file to save disk space. I don't think that there is that big of a benefit to retaining all of the previous checkpoint files, so usually I mark this as yes, but if you have gigabytes of disk space to spare, I suppose you could leave it no. Next, cache all training sets to GPU memory. I find that this option does actually significantly increase the speed of training, especially for data sets under 10 minutes. Anywhere from shaving off 2 to 10 seconds per epic, which over 300 epics can add up. However, it will increase your VRAM usage. Lastly, we have save a small final model to the weights folder at each save point. Now, unlike the other option to the left of this, these models are only like 50 megabytes each. Combined with a save frequency of 50, it doesn't really use that much disk space. So I mark this as yes. Basically, if our final model doesn't turn out the way we want it to, there's a chance that it could have overfit during the training process. And so we could go back to one of these earlier final models and see if one of them sounds better than the latest one. However, in practice, I rarely do this kind of backtracking. Now you'll notice that I have not touched any of these orange buttons, because out of all of these buttons, you only actually need just one. Once you have all of these parameters properly configured, you can just go down to the bottom right and hit 
one-click training, which will then start the process of pre-processing data, extracting pitch, extracting speech features, and then actually starting the training of your RVC model. You'll see some output information being spit out in the bottom right box here, but it's actually easier to read if you just go to the terminal screen that was also opened alongside with the web UI when you ran the batch script earlier. So if there are any errors that stop training, you should be able to see them in the terminal. However, assuming that there are no such errors, we can wait for the training to complete, which depends on the number of epics and the size of the dataset. That could be anywhere from 10 minutes to 5 hours. If you check your terminal output, it will give you the time that it took to complete each epic, which can give you an estimate of how long it's going to take. Do note that if you close this web page, it will not stop the training process, but you will lose the parameters that you use to start the training. So ideally, you should keep the web page open until you're sure that the training has completed correctly and you have all the files that you need out of it. Speaking of which, let's discuss the files that you need in order to package and distribute your model. The first file you're going to need is the index file, which is this long name that starts with added IVF44, etc, etc. To access it, let's go back to our RVC directory, go into the logs directory, and then go into the log directory for the character that you just trained. If training completed successfully, you should see that index file, which will be one of the files that you need to distribute in order to distribute a complete RVC model. So go ahead and copy that to wherever you need it. The second file we need is the final model weight. Go back into the top level RVC directory, navigate to assets, then to weights, and then you should see the final model weight for your trained RVC character. If you had the option checked to save a small final model at each save point, then you will also see all of those intermediate models, which will have a number next to them representing the epic and step that they were saved at. And one of these files is the last file you need. Here I'm just selecting the one without a suffix. Once you have those two files, you can, for example, put them together into a folder and upload them to Hugging Face, which is where my models are hosted. And if you go to my repository for RVC models, you can see I have a folder for each character. And then inside each folder, I have the final model weight and the index file. So that's it. That's how you train and distribute an RVC model.